Okay, so if you've been following along, the previous video was about the concept of the mental model called the time chain, right? Satoshi originally, he never called the, the blockchain a blockchain, at least early on. He, he, his first instinct was to call it a time chain as he did in a comment of the original source code in Bitcoin. So you'll see here on the left, I have the blockchain model, and then on the right, I have the time chain model. So the question I wanna talk about in this video is why there is a shared ledger, all right? And in order to answer that question, we have to go back in time. Before the Bitcoin network existed, cypherpunks were struggling to solve the double spend problem. So let me explain what the double spend problem is. In the digital world, cypherpunks wanted a way to send value peer to peer like we would in the physical world like cash. Meaning that when I have cash and I wanna pay you, I take the cash out of my wallet and then I hand it to you. There was no good way to do this in a digital world, right? Because of this double spend problem. So what this essentially was is that there was no real meaning of digital scarcity. Um, if I were gonna call some file of you know cash.png or cash you know, text file, uh, it, if I wanted to hand it to you, there was actually no way to know whether or not I had copied it first. Okay, that's a very, very basic understanding of, of what this double spend problem was. I think it's a, it's a pretty straightforward way to explain it. Meaning that it was impossible to stop someone from copying or duplicate data. It was also impossible to know if they had done that. In this scenario, the same unit of money could be spent twice, which is why it was called the double spend problem. Banks, payment processors, essentially middlemen, financial middlemen, authorized middlemen, solved this problem by verifying that all transactions they process only occur once, right? So using the same idea of me wanting to pay you with this digital cash, we had no way of knowing that I hadn't copied that, that file before I sent it to you. So what middlemen would do is they'd sit in between you and I whenever we make transactions on the internet and then they make sure that the transaction only happens once, right? So, so the real question for cypherpunks was how to do this without a middleman. So this takes us back to the two original concepts that Bitcoin was in later implementations of. The first one is called B money. So B money was an early, early concept of what would later become cryptocurrency. And it wasn't ever implemented in any type of code. It wasn't a network, it wasn't a platform. It was just a concept described by a cryptographer, Wei Dai. I might be butchering his name a little bit, but obviously Savage Cypherpunk. B money described what was called a distributed property title registry. So he, what, what, what Wei Dai was trying to figure out was, okay, well, if we want to have digital cash, how could we do that? If we wanted to be able to send funds in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, but online, if we wanted to have digital scarcity, but online, maybe what we do is we have this distributed title registry and everyone has a, a deed title and through that network, we'll be able to have this decentralized payment system. That was, that was how it was theorized. Bit Gold, which was by Nick Zabo, who did a fairly similar thing. He, he described this separate database construction, right? Where essentially, you know, you'd have this distributed database, separate databases that people could run and then they would do exactly the same thing, right? It's like, I could make a payment to you and it's all recorded on this network of databases. And these weren't very fleshed out ideas, but this is where the inspiration for Bitcoin drew. So now what we call, what, what these two concepts were, the distributed property title registry and the separate database concept, we now know these as full nodes in Bitcoin. Okay, so this is what we're talking about here is we're talking about ledgers, right? So why does Bitcoin have this network of ledgers? Why does it have a shared ledger? Well, it's because it was trying to solve this double spend problem. Because each of the ledgers are synchronized to the same state, we can all agree on who has paid who. Okay, so using the cash example again, if I want to pay you, you want to make sure that I haven't copied that, that, that pile of money before I've sent it to you, because then the money is worthless. So how do we solve this problem? Ah, we'll have a distributed database. We'll have a distributed network of title registries. And every time someone makes a transaction, we'll all record that transaction on our distributed database. That is what a full node is. That's what a, bit, a Bitcoin full node is. It's the ability 
It's the entity that is writing down all of our transactions that are happening in this decentralized network. So why do we need a ledger? And I think this is sort of the simple half of the question. Anytime we're recording transactions, we do that in a ledger. Okay, so the main purpose of any ledger is to establish order and a timestamp. Why is the blockchain's ledger shared is the more interesting part of the question. Because this is a network of independently run full nodes, the network isn't centralized to a single database, right? So when I showed that image of the middleman, it's always centralized, it's always centralized. So it's centralized to a company, it's centralized to a bank, it's centralized to a government. Okay, now with Bitcoin, although we have a shared blockchain, it's not centralized to a single database, right? We all maintain our own copy of the database, decentralized, but we synchronize those databases to the same state so that when anyone on the network makes a transaction, we all agree that the transaction has occurred. We agree, particularly because this is a ledger, we're agreeing on what order they're occurring in. At any point in time, if I make a transaction, you make a transaction and we disagree on the order, we're no longer on the same ledger. So this is why Bitcoin has a ledger is because we want to be able to send funds and we want to have some agreement as to what funds were sent and to when they were sent and what order they were sent in. OK, that's that's kind of a lot to take in, but I hope these visualizations sort of help absorb that concept. Each of the independent full nodes in the network is shared, meaning that the, I've, I've said this already. I've said this already, but let's say it again. Each of the independent nodes in the network is shared, meaning this, they're synchronized to the same state. And because every user in this network can run their own full node and verify their own transactions, the system can be trustless. Okay, so to some extent, the system is trustless, so that, uh, that particular trigger word will be the subject of another video. But for the purpose of this video, the purpose of the shared ledger is so that all the participants in the network can agree on the final order of transactions. If you enjoyed this video, if you wanna learn more about Bitcoin, you can check out the next video in the playlist and subscribe.